JFK assassination was a uh, comprehensive plan with lots of moving parts, very complex. And uh, I think the assassin planners, the assassination planners, knew they could get away with doing it this way because that they would be controlling the investigation. If you or I tried to do something like this with a complex plan, we would doom ourselves to failure because things would screw up and the authorities would catch us. But if you're the authorities, you can do a complex plan and uh, it's a feature rather than a bug because even if things go wrong, you can control them and the complexity makes it almost impossible to understand and almost impossible to explain it to somebody else if you do understand it. So I think that's what happened and we have um, lots of moving parts and one of the moving parts was what they did with Sergeant Owens. Sergeant Owens was Tippett's uh, supervisor in Oak Cliff on the day of the assassination and I think they moved him out of Oak, Oak Cliff so that he would not uh, interfere with what was going on on 10th Street. Uh, according to the official story, that's the shooting of Tippett on 10th Street. I don't think Tippett was actually shot there. I think he was shot in Dealey Plaza. But whatever happened on 10th Street, I think they intentionally removed Sergeant Owens from Oak Cliff so that he would not stumble upon it and ruin their plans. And this video will be based upon this part of the uh, Warren Commission testimony of Sergeant Owens. Uh, he says here, I had eaten lunch and I was on the way back to the substation. Channel 1 was not working properly. Some mic or some radio transmitter had left the mic open and I couldn't hear, and I switched over to channel 2, and I heard what sounded like Chief Curry say, it looks like the president has been hit. So not knowing uh, what he had been hit with, I went to the substation, and here on the radio, where they are sending squads downtown to Elman Houston. So uh, it's pretty clear from what Owen says here that he... Uh, he was listening to the radio when Chief Curry said, it looks like the president has been hit. And Chief Curry said that at about 12.31. So at 12.31 or thereabouts, Sergeant Owens is aware that something big is happening uh, downtown. And if we look at this uh, FBI report, of an interview, they say, that they had with Sergeant Owens on May 15, 1964, which is after his Warren Commission testimony, which had been in April. In here it says, according to Sergeant Owens, Officer Tippett had gone home to eat lunch, which was a normal and approved procedure, at about noontime. Sergeant Owens advised he could not furnish any information as to when or how Tippett's assignment from District 78 had been changed, as he, Owens, had gone to lunch and had not returned during the time that Tippett's assignment had changed. So, apparently Owens thinks that Tippett's assignment had been changed while Owens was at lunch. But if we look at the radio traffic involving Tippett, we can see that he clears from lunch at 11.51. So, according to the FBI report, Owens is thinking that Tippett went to lunch about noon, when apparently he must have gone to lunch you know, in the 11 o'clock hour, or maybe even slightly before that, and he's just coming back from lunch at 11.51. I don't know if this is just simply Owens not remembering it or what, but it doesn't agree with the radio traffic. And then we have the next thing we hear from Tippett is at 1217, where he just, uh, where he just uh, says he's going to be out of the car for a minute. He says at Bonneview and Keast, or, or Bonneview. And then the next thing we hear from him is 1220, when he says he's clear, so he's back in his car. 
And it's not until 1245 that Tippett's assignment is changed when the dispatcher tells him and R.C. Nelson to move into Central Oak Cliff. So, Owens, uh, either his memory is wrong or, uh, or something's wrong because he's got it wrong. Tippett's assignment changed after Owens had already been back from lunch. And presumably he was listening to the radio. Of course, I don't know what channel he was listening to because Tippett was on channel one. Maybe Owens was on channel two and didn't hear that. But in any event, uh, uh, Owens seems to be out of the loop on what's happening with Tippett. At least that's the way his memory has it. Now, getting back to uh, his Warren Commission testimony, moving on in, from the turquoise colored area, uh, this is about uh, when Owens is called to go to Elman Houston, or what causes him to go to Elman Houston. According to his Warren Commission testimony, I called the dispatcher's office and wanted to know if they wanted me downtown. They were very busy and never did answer me, so from that, I assumed that there was a big incident involved and maybe the president had been shot. So I leave 4020 West Illinois, where the substation is located, and proceed to Elman Houston Code 3. I stayed with Inspector Sawyer until I was informed that there was a shooting in Oak Cliff involving a police officer. But if we look at the radio traffic, uh, we can see at 1243, Inspector Sawyer here is on the radio. He's at the Texas School Book Depository, and he's in charge at the Texas School Book Depository. And an inspector outranks a sergeant. We need some more men down at the Texas School Book Depository. We should have some on Maine if we could get someone to pick them up and bring them down here. And then at 1247, the dispatcher calls Sergeant Owens and tells him to go to Elman Houston. So this is different than what Sergeant Owens told the Warren Commission. Uh, they did answer him, according to this. In fact, there's no indication that Sergeant Owens uh, is asking for instructions, but rather the dispatcher calls him and says that he is to report to Elman Houston at 1247. And he acknowledges that. And then at 1248, number four, I forget who that is at the moment, some big shot, asks who's in charge down there in that area, and they mean at Elman Houston, and the dispatcher says that 19, Sergeant Owens, is en route and will be in charge. And the reason I'm putting these three transmissions here is that at 1243, five minutes before the dispatcher says that Owens will be in charge, Inspector Sawyer is already in charge, and he's going to be in charge when Sergeant Owens gets there too because he's the inspector and Sergeant Owens is just the sergeant. So it looks to me as if the dispatcher here has sent for Sergeant Owens on the pretense that they need him to be in charge at the Texas School Book Depository and that's the story he's giving out to his superiors and yet there's no reason for it because uh, Inspector Sawyer is already in charge. It's not that the Sergeant Owens shouldn't be going to the Texas School Book Depository. I'm sure he could be very useful there. But the dispatcher is giving the reason as that he's going to be in charge, and that reason is false. And so I think it indicates, though it doesn't prove, but it indicates that Sergeant Owens was intentionally moved from Oak Cliff to be in charge at the Texas School Book Depository and intentionally in order to get him out of Oak Cliff uh, so that he's not there when uh, J.D. Tippett is supposedly shot on 10th Street. So I think this information uh, indicates that Sergeant Owens was not part of the conspiracy, that he was kept out of the loop on the activities of J.D. Tippett, the assignment of J.D. Tippett, and that he was purposefully removed from Oak Cliff so that he would not be there at the time that the shooting occurred on 10th Street. 
and I think this is another one of the many moving parts of this complex conspiracy that was uh, perpetrated by the authorities.